pray and ask God to meet with us, give us clarity. I have some uh, special things to minister to you today. We have some other uh, uh, things we want to share with you by others. And so, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to bless this day. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Open the eyes of our understanding, the knowledge of you, Lord. God, we speak your word this day, Lord. Let there be a clarity. Give me wisdom how to present the subject where they can understand where I can. God, I always tell them I try to make it so simple that I can even understand it. In Jesus' name, Lord God, let us use what we're going to learn today the rest of our life. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Before we start, uh, I wanted to... Uh, it's already getting warm here. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we go, it gets hot <laughs> for some reason. Amen. So God is good. Good to see you. And um, there's nothing impossible to God. And we're excited to be praying for the Georgia trip to Pastor Derek's church. Uh, we want to see the glory of God, uh, the greater glory come down and never leave. Amen. Praise God. And so God is good. Uh, I've asked a couple of people to share a testimony. They would. And, uh, I'll get John Suave. Am I saying your name right? Suave. That's close. Maybe my English. Okay, if you come up here and <clears throat> share your testimony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it's exciting just to be up here. Amen. <laughs> um, praise God. Um, he wants me to share what happened to me the other day, and it was I was taken into the spirit. And it was such an experience that when it happened, I had to go to him and tell him. And it's like a, a, a drawing in your in your spirit, man, and it pulls you. It's like the only way I can describe it was like you're on one of those uh, road uh, uh, gate rides that you get pulled back because it's going so fast. It was going the other way, though. It was like, wow, it was such an experience. He took me through the spirit. And then I went into this little maze and I was being led. And it was like, wow, what's going on? What's going on? And it was like, I was so excited because you're being moved. And it's like, wow, God, this is awesome. This is such an experience. And then I was taken to this office. And in this huge office, it's probably bigger than the church. And it was like, I was just being drawn around. And then all of a sudden, I was just taken again into the sky. And I was in a van. And I, I'm looking in this van. The van was empty. And I said, wow, what is this? And I, looking at the guy driving, I said, hey, hey can you see me? And he's driving. He goes, of course I can see you. And I'm thinking, whoa, whoa, what? And then I was impressed to pray for him. So I put my hand out and just started praying in the spirit. And then I just went into weeping. And then I just woke up back in my bed. And I thought, wow, Lord, what an experience. And then when I shared that with the pastor, he goes, man, you were taken in the spirit. And I said, wow, well, praise God. And let's just believe God. And I, I just want to encourage you to stay after what we're doing for God, because He's doing it for us, and we got to just stay after him. And, amen. Amen. I bored in seat white test, so I didn't drink his water, so that's good. <laughs> amen. Uh, so that, that's a, a powerful testimony. I told him that, you know, he was caught away in the spirit, and even that office that he went into, it had to do with uh, his office in, in the five-fold ministry. And also the, the vehicle he got in, many times a vehicle in a dream uh, is your ministry. And there's a lot could go into there. I won't go into it all right now. And, and that God directed him. And so uh, we have another testimony or so in a moment. But uh, the thing is, people that's in this class have been here for a while. They're starting now to, some of them are seeing angels for the first time in their whole life, having a manifest right in their home. I mean, just like, I'm looking at you. Uh, so, some are seeing uh, cancers healed. They've never seen a miracle in their life. Seeing bone cancer healed, medically verified. Amen. Uh, others are having all kinds of experiences uh, with the things of God and seeing in the realm of the spirit. And uh, this is what it is. There's a seed going in. There's an importation going in uh, to you in the class and those who are listening uh, by uh, the uh, YouTube later, Facebook Live right now. And on Facebook Live, I check it later in the afternoon. We have <clears throat> multiple people from the Philippines, and Cambodia, Vietnam, India, Sudan, Myanmar, uh, listen to this. Uh, some over in uh, Africa, they're listening right now. Amen. While we sit here, so I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's worth it. So if I could get Lois to come up and share a testimony. <clears throat> 
Good morning. Um, I don't know about you guys, but all of this, this class is just making me so hungry and also very humbled by what God's yeah. doing. Yeah. And um, one of the things that Pastor Dave is always saying is that we need to pray to have visions and dreams. So I've been really trying to focus on praying, especially before I go to sleep, about having visions and dreams and being first person about it. I have visions, I have dreams. And this week, especially, it's been like taking off. So um, one night I had a dream that my, I heard my son's voice, who's not a believer and I've been praying for for many years. And he's also been kind of on the edge of a severe depression. So um, I heard his voice as clear as day in my ear saying, I've had a spiritual awakening and I just shot awake and started praying for him immediately. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a report from him to see if something was going on, but I haven't connected. <laughs> with and then um, another night I was uh, just sort of, I, I, I forgot to tell you this the other night. It started with this warm feeling on my feet, under my heels. And it just went up and up and up until it hit my, my eyes. And then all of a sudden I looked up to my left and I could see a window opening out of black. And it was this beautiful, like, really deep golden sunset unlike anything earthly and like with tropical trees and stuff and it started to close up again and i was like no no i gotta press in i gotta press in and um then it started opening up a little bit it closed again i said okay god what are, what's happening here what does it mean what are we doing and he's like no we're just practicing and i just thought that was really great because it was like he was we were conversing at the same time so and just uh, humbles me when i know that he's thinking of me and working with me so <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God, God is good. Uh, it's exciting to hear what's happening to people. So you want to do yours? Sure. Okay. Uh, we'll have Shannon come up and share one. I know everybody has one. We can't do it all. I have a lot to teach. Amen. No problem. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Um, this has to do with healing my testimony. My sister Michelle about a month ago or so needed emergency back surgery. And um, <clears throat> God had given me a word of knowledge for her. But most recently, <clears throat> excuse me, most recently um, she had come to my house and she was having severe back pain going from her right rear end cheek going down her leg. And so in the spirit, I was told to just she, she was talking about it, so I, I just laid my hand on her buttocks and said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And when I did that, she said, oh, oh, I feel something. Do it again. And so I did it again, and I laid my hand on again, and I said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And, and the pain went away. Amen. She and I and I and I told her to declare that she was healed, to tell th two or more people, to make it binding in the courts of heaven. And so, um, Pastor David is is sowing so much into us spiritually, healings. Um, my hands, when I when I'm <clears throat> like right now, they're turning red just talking about it and getting uh, oily. And so, uh, there's so many different things that have been happening. But that was. Um, especially special to my heart because it's my Amen. sister. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God is good. Amen. I yeah. appreciate the testimony. I know we all have some and uh, I started telling my testimony that'll be hours and hours, of course. If you go to Ecclesiastes chapter three <clears throat> and uh, I get the cord out of the way. You never see me dancing chords. And uh, <laughs> you think I was in the spirit, but I'm tangled in the chords. <laughs> Amen. So God, God is doing great things. I have prayed, Lord, give, give me the ability to bring this to you in a way that you can understand it. And like you've heard me say often, I mentioned a while ago, I try to make it so simple. When I teach it, I can understand it. I don't like to be way out somewhere and people what in the world is he talking about? And sometimes it's hard to do because I can see it, but to bring it to people to understand what I'm saying, that's another thing. So Ecclesiastes chapter three, and the, the title of this message for those that like titles is Time, Purpose, Season. And this will be some deep stuff today that will help you the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. So Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. <clears throat> 
Well, look, here it is right here. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So let's read one again and we'll read some more. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A word, there's a time, there's a purpose, and there's a season. We're going to break all that down. So let's read a little bit more Ecclesiastes. I love reading this. <clears throat> Verse two, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plan, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Okay, now just read that first verse again. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And so we see there, there is a time, there's a purpose and a season. And um, let me try to explain something to help you begin to focus in, because we have a lot to share with you here. It's mother scriptures. <clears throat> Excuse my voice again. But um, think about it. Um, everybody take a breath. Okay. Most of you appear to be in time right now. You're still alive. You're in time. You're born to be a time you leave this world, but right now you're here, right? That's so another you catch my wife and I regular service. You think we left, but we just meditate. <laughs> <laughs> we're, ha we're having dreams. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we're in time. Okay, but we're going to be talking about purpose. We're talking about season. Now, let me use this for example. Uh, when I was in the military, I went through infantry training to train for my purpose. Uh, that was my purpose to train. Really, I was training for my season. The training was my purpose, preparation, get me ready for my season, which was in the jungles in war. So I was still alive, there's time. My purpose was to prepare and train and get ready for my season that was coming. So every one of us have a time, a purpose, and a season. And so uh, let's read Romans 8, 28. Some of you probably can quote it, I'm sure. <clears throat> and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And I, I, like, I like to, when I, when I read that verse, I always like to share that if you take a uh, raw flour and stick your mouth, it's horrible. Raw bacon stone in your mouth, horrible. A raw egg, you know, horrible. Uh, uh, unsweetened chocolate, very bitter. I remember as a kid, I bought some. I thought, man, look at that big bar. And I, about one bite, I was through, you know what I mean? And, and uh, but, but we take all those ingredients, mix them together, and put them in the oven, and put heat on them. We have chocolate cake. So all things work together for the good of those that call it love God and call it according to his purpose. You see that word purpose again. And so um, it's going to work together if we're, we love God and we're in his purpose. If we're in that training process, purpose, getting ready for the grand finale. Because one day we're going to step out of our purpose, though we'll still have purpose, but we're going to step into our season. And when you're in your season, it's different. Remember Chuck Yeager, I've used his example at times. They were the first to break the, 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 the sound barrier uh, in the jet. And many pilots got up there right next to it. And, uh, they said a horrible vibration, boom, 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 like this, you know. And, and they, they pull the power back, come back down. But one time when Chuck Yeager, Yeager hit that, he puts the throttle forward, accelerated, and went broke the sound barrier when he did it almost friction free. It's just like glass up there after that. Wow. And so sometimes in your purpose, you're in that man, I'm trying to get in. Man, man, I got bumps all over me right now. The presence of God is so strong. You're, you're trying to try to get into that, but keep pressing on 
Hit the throttle. Amen. Don't back off. Amen. God, deliver your people from fear. Amen. I know so many Christians are totally crippled by fear. Amen. You know, we could deliver the body of Christ. We deliver the world. Amen. Amen. Let that soak them in. Yes. And that is prophetic. If we could deliver the body of Christ. We could deliver the world. Amen. Amen. And so the thing is, where it may be shaking your purpose, but keep pressing. You're going to hit your season. When you hit your season, we'll cover a lot more on. Don't worry. When you hit your season, suddenly everything is so hard. It's so easy because you're working under under great grace, like we read about in, in Acts four. Great grace was upon them. not just grace. Great grace. Grace, the unmerited favor of God and divine enablement. But in Acts four, great grace was upon them. And I believe that's a type of what the church is moving into right now. Amen. I believe Acts 2 was one of the earlier awakenings, a type of it. But Acts 4 is what we're stepping into now, that the place will be shaken and great grace is going to be upon us. Amen. The greater glory is going to manifest. And when you're in that, there's a smoothness about working in the spirit. It's so easy. Amen. Because you're in your season. I've told people when, when I go into ministry in Vietnam, uh, I work under anointing that is different from everywhere else. I don't know why, but everything is so smooth, so easy. I, I don't know why, you know, not like I'm doing something different, but it's just like God has put some kind of special grace upon me, a special anointing for that nation. People say, do, do you go back there because you're guilty from the war? Not at all. I go there because God called me in an open vision right after I came to God. Showed me an open vision that I would go back into Vietnam and preach the gospel. From the time of the vision to my foot set down, the hard killing ground was 17 years. But I held on to it. I said, God said it. He's going to do it. I would hold on to it. Amen. I'd share with, with my wife and close friends, but not wet blankets out there. You know, I said, one day I'm going to Vietnam, I'm going to preach the gospel. I've been back 22 times since the war. Amen. 23 times counting the war, 23 since the war, ministry. And uh, so they opened up borders, wheels up. I hope some of y'all are going with us. I'd like to get some of y'all into the Philippines and India because uh, we, we lot of have mass crowds and minister. It's, it, you know, we get you a lot of practice. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so let's go back to time. Uh, Adam and Eve fell. When they fell, they were in time. And, and there's, a, you know, there's time to be born. There's time to die. The Bible says the point once for a man to die, and then after that, the judgment. Right now, we're in time. I don't know how much time I have, but I want to use it for God. Yes. I don't want to waste it. Okay, the purpose designs your destiny. Your purpose designs your destiny. Back, back to infantry. We're trained to fight. We're trained to charge bunkers. We're trained to fire every weapon you can imagine. A few you can't imagine, probably. <laughs> and and uh, uh, we're put through tests with endurance. I mean, it gives up on godly hours, 4, 4.30 in the morning, fall in, march to the PT field. You do PT, you run four to five miles every morning, you come back for breakfast. And they scream at you while you're eating, you know. <laughs> and at your grandma's house, what are you doing? Hurry. <laughs> and and, and then, then you train all day long. And sometimes late at night, they have you out. And sometimes I'm in the swamps of Georgia where I train for infantry. Amen. I like Fort Gordon, Georgia, just out of uh, Augusta, Georgia. And, and, but uh, the purpose designs your destiny. Spiritually, we're talking about God's purpose. And so we're yielding to God's purpose. So I'm not spending my time training to do something that won't, as we say, take to amount to hill of beans in eternity. I'm spending time training something that's going to work. Amen. Amen. If you're not going to get in the ring, don't train the box. You're wasting your time. And by that purpose is designed your destiny. It will bring you into your season. Because you're properly submitted to the purpose. I'm trying to go slow. It will bring you in to your season. Just like I keep using the word. You know, it hit me this morning by explaining this way. They can understand easier. 
uh, after I trained, I was ready for war. At least I thought it was. <laughs> when I got there, I said, maybe the training should have been harder. And it was. It was hard, but I had no idea. Uh, okay, if you're living in your purpose, God will shift all good things all things into good. Remember the scripture we read a while ago? All things work together to good, those who love God, to those who are called according to the purpose. If you're living in your purpose, God will shift everything to good. Right. <clears throat> you, you, uh, uh, if you ever notice, most, most people walk the direction they're looking. And sometimes they look off, you know, as they have certain accidents on the road, you know. Uh, we call it rubberneckers down south. You know, every time we have a small wreck, get ready, there's more coming. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it had been one of those big ones myself. So if it's God's purpose you're in, you're in, uh, he's going to make a way. He's going to make a way because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. <clears throat> if you get out of your purpose, repent, and God will bring you back. You realize, man, I'm, I'm out of my purpose. How many people you know to start college courses a certain major? This is what I'm going to do for life. This is what I'm being. And after the guy didn't realize, man, I don't even like this stuff. Amen? Man, think about it. And then, then they had to change. Well, if you get out of the God's purpose, you realize, wait a minute, I, I'm wasting time. Because see, while you're using your purpose, you are in time. But we only have a certain amount of time on this earth. We don't know how long. And if we're not in the purpose of God, we're wasting time. I just want to take these little courses. You do? You know? I got more to share on that in a minute. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. I get excited. You're, you're by design able to do what you're called to do. <clears throat> when God calls you to do something, he equips you. Yes. He always does. For us, when we're called, I mean, I, you know, when he called me to preach a little bit after I was saved, you know, and very close to the time he called me, I yeah, would one day return to Vietnam to preach the gospel. He called me with visions, light from heaven, audible voice of God, everything. I won't go into all the details. Some of you have heard it. And, and he called me to preach. But my, but my, my, my vision was so small. You know, we call me a preacher. I'm, you know, I'm in a little East Texas church, you know, and every, every three to five miles, they have another of the same denomination. Pastor preach about somebody sin this week. They run down to that church and stay there until the pastor preach about that sin. They go to another. It's like, like uh, flea powder, powder on dog's back. Amen. And, and, and so my, my only vision was, you know, one day I'm going to be in one of these little East Texas country churches preaching. And, and, and that's my only vision because that's all I knew. But God had to keep working, but I submitted to his purpose. Yes. Then later I went to Bible college. He only sent me to Bible college to get me out of the home church. There's, there, there's negative stuff going on. I won't go into detail right now that I didn't know about. And, and uh, we're, I mean, we were young and God, we thought everybody loved God. You know, and then later I found out and wasn't the case, you know. And um, it, it was a very bad situation in there, but I didn't know it. I was, I was like the stray dog out on a road abandoned, been dumped out somewhere on a cold rainy night. I was glad to be in the house. It was warm and <laughs> I was glad to be somewhere, you know? And, and, uh, and my wife and I, I mean, we had like Sunday morning, Sunday night services. We had Wednesday night service. We went all of them. We had, I worked a hundred mile round trip from where I lived. Uh, uh, I worked full time. And, and uh, we come home, we got our three little kids, and sometimes the road flooded and stumped to a water box and sticking their head out. We had to take our shoes and socks off, carry our little kids, and walk through the way through uh, nearly knee deep water to our Jeep on a little hill to get in it, to go to church and come back and do it again. And then 4 30 in the morning, up, getting ready to go to work, you know, 100 mile round trip. But we weren't trying to prove that we wanted to be in church. When we had revivals there, no break nights, it was seven nights a week, two or three weeks. So now four weeks solid, seven nights a week. Wow. They, they, they had the wrong doctrine. They, they thought if you took a break night, the Holy Spirit would leave and not come back. Well, I know better than that, you know. <laughs> and uh, where I go, he, he goes. Yeah. But but anyway, but the thing we're, we're hungry for the things of God. 
and God was training us, making us stretch out. And then I went to Bible college, went to college full-time, worked full-time, had a wife and three children. I was 33 years old when I went to Bible college. Man. Then I had to unlearn probably over half of what they taught me years later when God delivered me from legalism. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And most of what I teach now, I've learned on my own. I'm, I'm a lifelong student. I'm still yes. learning. Yes. Even as I'm teaching this, I'm learning more. But I was in my purpose. I was going somewhere. I didn't realize where I was going, but I was going. Yeah. You know, I had my backpack totally committed. God, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. Then God began to expand my vision. Amen. And then, then, then he called me three months before I graduated to Kingston, New York, specifically right here. Never been in New York in my life, never intended to come. But see, I was in my purpose. I was not in my season yet, but I was in my purpose. Amen. Now, we even, one of the night, we spent a night at the Sky Top Hotel, and God gave me a vision, and there's a heat wave, and I think it's for right now, there's like a heat wave of destruction coming across the countryside. June, we're visiting. All green, nice trees with a green on it, and, and uh, uh, there's a heat wave coming across, and every tree hit, they just shriveled up. Every person they hit, they shriveled up like shoe leather or bone dead, and I'm running ahead of that try to reach the souls of men and women, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe it's my sound, I still have the sound is valid. You realize I go anywhere in the world I want to and run my ministry. Any country, anywhere in the U.S., I go down to I love water and beaches and swimming pools. You know, I could go down to sunny Florida, ride my Harley probably 10, 10 months a year, you know, uh, you know, enjoy the sand and stuff, you know, and all that. But I, I have an assignment here right now. Unless God change, I'm assigned here. I personally, I think I'll be here until they carry me out. You know, we should tell people don't let six big men carry the church. Paul, Paul Barron. <laughs> Some people go, go to church Christmas, Easter, and their funeral. <laughs> well, we're not talking about funeral right now. Okay. <clears throat> okay um, Okay, think about it. Uh, eagle has wings to fly. They're not made for the chicken yard. Yes. You all heard the, the little little parable about the, somehow the little eaglet got in the chicken yard and, you know, pecking on the ground and probably growing his feathers. And the, the little story uh, said, you know, the chicken would look up and see the big eagles way up in the air flying. And there's something that little, little eaglet says, you know, I, I belong up there. And the, the, the old story goes, the old parable goes, that finally the, the wings, the, the feathers grew. And one day it took off its sword. But even when we're in our little home country church that we attended uh, when I first came to God, every time evangelists come through, we totally fall in love with them. We pour into them, sow into them. And, and, and when they would leave, uh, we, I felt like the, the proverbial goose left on the pond when all the others went south. You know, I just like, I don't belong here. But God, I was in purpose and God was training. And so, and so that's important. I tell you that if you're a spiritual person, what your passion is, is probably the direction God's leading you. That's right. I've asked you over and over, and the question you keep hearing it from me if time and finances is no question, you had all you needed. What would you do for God today? My answer to that is I would do the same thing I'm doing right now, but in a bigger way. Right. Give me a couple million dollars, I'd be having bigger meetings. I'd be putting more wells in. I'd be feeding more hungry. I'd be taking care of more orphans. Amen, Amen uh, et cetera. I'd be doing it a bigger way. Right. Amen. Traveling to more nations. You know, we, we travel. It costs a lot to travel. My last trip, Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines, we brought my son in, to, flew him into ministry with us and everything. But by the time we left, we spent around close to $20,000 on that one trip. Amen. That's why we need more than a nickel or a dime here and there. We need big sewing into our ministry, but God is going to take care of us. Now I can go on smaller trips into Cambodia and Vietnam, probably around $6,000, you know, but not do as much. But if I could do a lot, like in Philippines, we trained 400 pastors and leaders for four days solid all day long, went up in the mountain and trained tribal pastors. Amen. And then it flew into Cambodia and Vietnam ministering and praise God. So we were able to touch a lot of people. 
I just got an email yesterday. Funniest email I ever got. The man from Kenya wrote me an email. You'd be proud of this, Lois. Uh, he typed a whole email in the subject, the other email. And I, I'm like this. I'm trying to make it move. And I couldn't go up further. He wouldn't let me do it, you know. And I kept making it. I finally was able to read it. But he was in, say, the last meeting in Kenya with a friend of mine that I still work with, Dankin, out of uh, Kenya. And uh, uh, Dankin, some of the pastors under him came. He has got a major leg, leg problem. He said, when I spoke a word of faith, it was instantly healed. Amen. Amen. The, the, ne the next night, I wish they'd been there last night, that's when the totally blind lady received her sight. They drug her up on a platform before I even preached. And that's when the lightning began to hit, storms being hit. The night before, I saw the huge dragon in the sky. And I found that the, the witches in the area was telling the people they had they actually had animals dying. And the witches told the people, my prayer, my prayers was killing their animals. My prayers were so powerful, it's killing their animals, trying to get them to come attack me. And I see this dragon in the sky. And then we had one more night after that. Thank God we didn't get attacked. I've, I've been in churches that mobs have attacked uh, in Cambodia, literally. Uh, I live an exciting life. I said, tell you, if you ever find me dead, tell them one thing. He did not die of boredom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Amen. I will go down swinging. Okay, you're wired to succeed in God's purpose for you. You're only wired to succeed in God's purpose for you. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. It is say that if you're going to do your own thing, you're going to really be blessed. If you think you're being blessed there, it's probably not from the Holy Spirit. It could be a demonic blessing, you want to call it that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't know the difference between a curse and a blessing. Mm -hmm. Years ago, uh, not long after we started church, this man started coming. We were in town. We were renting a facility on Tripper, another group owned. And, and uh, he started coming. He had his children. His wife didn't come with him, but he had, I don't know how many children. I don't know why I remember. He had a bunch of children. But, but he started coming. He said, man, this is what I've been looking for. I want to be in this church. And right after that, the man had a, a, a small, uh, inherited about $2,000. But that's back in the 80s, you know, a little bigger than it would be today. And he went and bought him a TV, uh, some video stuff, and all this stuff, and never showed up to church again. Wow. If you have a price, the devil's going to pay it. Oh, yes, right. But you don't have any price. I like that. Amen. Okay. There's nothing he can pay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like many times, my wife and I are, are half a world apart. And, and I, I'm in the area that there's prostitutes everywhere. Uh, every motor driver, you, you want a lady? No. You want a little girl? No. You want a little boy? No. I have a wife, you know, but we're faithful to one another. But if you have a price, you'll pay it. Mm -hmm. See, what you do when people watch is one thing. What you do when no one's watching is another thing. Bring it. Amen. 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 You know, what would you do if you had the opportunity? What would the criminals in our day do? They had the opportunity. Some of them are doing a pretty good job of it already, but they didn't think they could get caught. They could get away with it. What would they do? Think about it. Okay, moving on. Let's go to Ephesians chapter three. Wet my whistle again. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who may be able, no, no, who is able to do a, a little bit, no, exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. <clears throat> in other words, he do exceedingly above all we can ask or think. Amen. Your plans that you think you have for God, he's going to do exceedingly above all that. Once you step in from your purpose, we'll get a season more in a minute, into your season. Uh, according to the power, that word power, dunamis, and the word works is the Greek word energio, energy. And where faith without works is dead. Oh, I, I believe those people can be saved in that nation. 
but get you a ticket and go. Preach it. Oh, I think God can heal that person. Go slap hands on them. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So you do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. His plans are so much bigger than ours. His ways are so much bigger than ours. Hallelujah. Okay, and at times, let me warn you, that there will be an enemy assigned to your purpose. This is part of the process. Uh, remember, your Christian armor prophesies a battle. And it's to the front, not to the back. That's right. We kind of had an unwritten rule in the infantry. Don't run the other way in the battle. You, know, it, you might get hurt. You leave it there. <laughs> Amen. And uh, so David had a purpose, a cause. Is there, is there not a cause? And he overcame his enemy by facing his adversary, Goliath, and stating his purpose that brought David into season. That's his purpose. He's still training for his purpose, but he's going to bring him into season. God's ultimate plan for David to rule as king of Israel. Amen. I look forward to meeting him. I see a lot of his statues around. I don't know how close it is to the way he really looks. And I have a pastor friend that went to, uh, to um, uh, Rome, and his mother-in-law was with him, and she was staring at David's statue, and she kept staring and staring. She finally said, uh, it must have been cold. <laughs> so anyway, but I, I look forward to meeting King David, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? So, I can't drive home without going by a David statue. So, yeah, I don't know if it's his likeness or not, but I look forward to meeting. I haven't met uh, Elisha, and I've met Apostle Paul. Um, and I can describe him to a T. I uh, met him in third heaven. And, um, and remember, there's nothing dead in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, we don't pray the dead or anything like that. There's nothing dead in heaven. Okay, Torfon is very close. Our significance in life is measured by what we by what we do that makes a significance to others. In other words, whether we're significant in our life, whether our life really is mattering, is measured by what we do in our life that matters to others. If we're not changing others, we're not blessing others, right. we're not getting others saved, others healed, others set free. I say set free, my mind still go back. If we could somehow deliver the body of Christ, yeah. we, we, we'd reach our world. Yeah. We really would. Amen. Kind of my word for the day. I mean, it, it's really stirring on me. God. I watch so many Christians. I mean, I know, not, not just around here, I mean, other places. They're totally bound. Some of them are horribly hurt in childhood, and they're still hurting people in adulthood. Always remember, Hurt people, hurt people. Yes. Right. Free people, free people. Amen. Amen. They're still hurting people. Mm -hmm. and, and they think everybody else is hurting them. Mm -hmm. But always remember what I teach you. People scream in the mirror. What they see in themselves. Mm -hmm. Consciously or subconsciously, they'll accuse you of being. The thief thinks you're going to steal from them. The liar thinks you'll lie to them. The unfaithful spouse thinks their spouse will be unfaithful to them. Amen. Amen. People, usually what they accuse you of. I've had people in the witchcraft leave our church over the years and, and get on the phones or calling people in our church say, get away from there. They're in witchcraft. But the people left, they were in witchcraft. They had Jezebel spirits. Right. But they accused us of being witchcraft because we've worked by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't take it too seriously if somebody accuses you like that. Mm -hmm. it's like, to me, it's like water off a duck's back. I'm, I've been in this business a long time. Amen. Amen. Okay, if what we're doing does not make a difference to others, stop doing it. You're not in your purpose. Read Isaiah 61 sometime. Mm -hmm. you, and then Jesus quoted part of it again in the Gospels. That, that's the, God's overall purpose. That's what we're here for. And he may have you major in certain areas more than others. But let me read that again. If what we're doing does not make a difference to others, stop doing it. Do not spend your life majoring in minors. Some people just spend their whole life majoring in minors. Don't you, know, you know, what they spend all their time doing is not going to matter. Amen? Amen. 
It's nice to have a nice house and a nice yard. I was in the weed, weed patch cutting the other day again. You know, we, we don't bend as easy as we used to. <laughs> Amen. And, and uh, but but uh, you know, we, we try to get it fixed nice, have some flowers. We we love flowers and so that's nice. <clears throat> and but all of that's not gonna matter in eternity. That's right. But you know, well, I, I can't I can't go reach a soul and teach a Bible study. I've got to stay home and work in my yard. Come on. Amen. Nothing wrong working in the yard. First. Yeah, we got that coming up. Matthew 6 33. Right. Seek your first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things be added. Yeah. But most Christians are not seeking God. No. Most Christians say the Holy Spirit is leading me. I don't want to get political here, but even during the election, they thought they were led by the Holy Spirit to vote. <clears throat> Figure out what spirit was leading. Just leave it there. We don't want to be political on this. Leave down this one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, and so we read a while ago in Ecclesiastes 3. He said, to everything there's a season. There's four seasons in the natural. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the natural, we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. Okay, in time, you have past, present, and future. <clears throat> you live in the past. You come to the present, but you go into the future. Prepare yourself for your season. Time is the length of days given to man to live on earth. Man was trapped in time at the fall. Living just in time is boring if you're not in your purpose. Yeah, that's right. yeah, I mean, how do you like to go to college and take with a major you didn't even like? If you spend a lot of time, that'd be so boring. Why? Because you're not in your purpose. Amen. Amen. Be excited. Amen. Even Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way they should go when they're old, they will not depart from it. That's not just a religious training. That's also, we study out deep, the parents figure out what gifts God gave that child yes, right. and help them develop into that. Yes. That one child may have been given gifts to work with their hands. You know, uh, don't try to make a lawyer out of them or something, you know, uh, others may have gifts in the other area. And a lot of time, many parents would try to live the life they wish they lived through their child and make their child be what they wanted to be. Yeah. You know, I had loved ones that wanted to be, be an airline pilot, a doctor, or a lawyer because they paid good money or used to probably <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> now they may not be so good, <clears throat> but, uh, but anyway, the thing is, uh, I want to be in God's purpose. Yes. That's all that matters. Right. Seek him first. But how many people know that really, really, let's be honest. How many people really do that? <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When an emergency, oh God. Think about it. Okay. Um, shift your focus from time to season. If we focus on time, we'll, you will miss your season. Time is general. And later, I'm going to teach you more about time uh, because uh, time is created. And everything created, we have authority over. Now, I'm going to talk to you all about that. I, I've used it. I've literally used it. I've changed time. I've changed a lot of things. I've been transported. Amen. Amen. Um, we'll talk more about that in a whole lesson one day on time. It's very interesting because we never think about that Amen. because no one ever told us. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <clears throat> so shift your focus from time to season. Don't just focus on, well, what I'm going to do with my time today. If you're in the purpose of God, start looking towards that season. I've got a season coming up. When we trained in the infantry, our mind was already on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Amen. When I come out of infantry, had they not cut orders to go to Vietnam in the infantry, I would go and volunteer. I wanted to go fight so bad. You know, I had, would go jump the tree or something, fought a tree. I wanted to go fight because they put that in you. That's my purpose. DNA. Yeah, your DNA, my, my purpose. That, that's who I was. And I, I got to go to my season. Not wrecked me. <laughs> I got my season. 
you're the real buds. <laughs> <laughs> With a piece of metal went on my head. Some of my toys I had today was thrown at me in battle. But one guy had a big old uh, child calm, the called potato masher grenade with a big handle. And in the battle, he threw it at us. He forgot to pop the top. That's a cap on the pin on those. So I don't know whatever happened. That guy <laughs> is stuck in the ground. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this guy had a moment. <laughs> anyway, but, um, you know, when, when grenades are laying around you, that's a little too close, but God took care of it. Amen. He just kept me alive. It wasn't me. Purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a purpose getting ready to come up in a season right then. I didn't know my purpose. Um, so if you, again, if you focus on time, you will miss your season. Time is general. Seasons, a certain period of time. Listen close. Seasons, a person, certain period of time that is more by certain natural and supernatural events. Mary talked about Chuck Yeager a while ago with the natural. That, that when you're in your season, suddenly you have great grace on you. You have authority and power. Uh, you're operating, you're seeing in the spirit like never before. Amen. Because you're in your season. Amen. Like uh, some trips back in Philippines, I was praying in my room. No, he went on that trip. And I had to have a big room that time. Looked all the way over Kaganandi or a beautiful view. And, and um and I'm up and down, praying in my room, walking up and down, praying, praying in tongues, praying in English, and, and praying for the meeting we're going to have, I think, 4, 4.30 that afternoon. And suddenly I saw a preacher, a, a, a pastor and I, and I, that I never saw before. And I saw what the situation was going on with him. And I get to the meeting, I preach, I pray for people, I sit down, and I still, I'm looking, and I didn't see him. And then suddenly he said, well, Pastor Stones will come up and close the meeting. We walked the silhouette. That's what I saw for the side. I said, that's him. And so, so he got there. I said, I need, I need to get back up here. And I prophesied the power of God hit him. He told my pastor friend, he said, everything he said, exactly what I need to hear. And then uh, some of you may remember maybe a year, year and a half ago on Facebook, I put a picture of him laying flat on the floor and told the story. Suddenly he writes me from Philippines. I was that pastor. You blessed me so much. I didn't know who he was. Never seen him in my life before. And hadn't seen him after that. I know of <laughs> I see so many people, you have to realize we see thousands of people and they, could, they know us because we're one up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't you remember? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can remember my name sometimes. Yeah. So again, the season, a certain period of time more by certain natural, supernatural events. When you're in your season, things happen for you. If you don't have a season, you're trapped in time. You have more grace and anointing when you're in your season. <clears throat> Moses' time was 40 years. Right. His season was 40 years. Jesus' time was 30 years. His season was three and a half years. Think about it. Wow. Amen. Purpose is the original intention you were created for. Is the thoughts of God in motion. We're becoming what we always were before we were conceived. If you have not watched the video, uh, a substance before time that I did in here, uh, you need you need to watch that probably more than once. It's a revelation that when I began to preach it, I never heard in my life anyone preach that, but God showed it to me. And now all over Sid Roth and everywhere, they're talking about it. Uh, every time you turn around, somebody's talking about the same concept. That happens to me a lot. Praise God. It, but But the thing is, Purpose, original attention that you're created for. God had a plan before time. Amen. You, you can study that out uh, in uh, later in Ecclesiastes, I think 33, Psalm 139. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 1. Amen. Hallelujah. But the thing is, you're created for something. Yes. You're not some accident that just bumbled in like, what am I here for? No, you're created for something. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that purpose uh, is the original intention you're created for. It is God's thoughts in motion. Yes. That's what your season, what God planned all along. Mm -hmm. But he had to get you into time. He had to get you into his purpose yes. to train. Yes. See, remember, even David facing Goliath, 
he had just picturesquely speaking, he had a lion hide and a bear hide in a smokehouse. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time he used that slingshot. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, he tells that giant, he said, man, is that bear was, is that lion was? So are you, and I'm going to have your head today. Amen. 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 I can maybe walk around with some head, but they did back then. That's what they did. One time in Vietnam, we were sitting on the Cambodian border. Uh, one of our men got blown up, and all we could find was half a rib cage. We had to carry that out of the jungle to send home to be buried. That's all the all there's left to be buried. And so I, I can't imagine carrying somebody's head around. Of course, some of the Vietnam veterans, we didn't do it in our year, but some of them had, had necklaces of enemy ears. I, I wouldn't do that for, for nothing. One, time, one person, they said, I, I saw them on one of the documentaries, looked at it, thought they had prunes around their necks, those ears, dried ears. I, I wouldn't do that. I never saw anybody do that, but I see a lot of documentaries they did. They, they had the necklace, you know. And, yeah. When I first got there, I thought, you know, I'll be like the old cowboy. I'm going to notch my gun. I said, man, this ain't plastic. <laughs> I'm 60. <laughs> I didn't have no magic marker. <laughs> but anyway, five weeks of time, you can't count anymore anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Yes. Okay, so we're be we're becoming what we, we always were before we could see. Every, now listen to this close. Every season is connected to a person. You must discern who the Lord is sending you. God will assign someone <laughs> to help bring you into your season. Develop you in your purpose and bring you into your season. God, God will assign someone. That, that just a law of the spirit, the Elijah, Elisha concept. Paul, Timothy, Titus. Uh, God has someone that will help bring you into your season. You need to discern that. <clears throat> Seasons issued according to purpose. Listen closely. If you're not in, if we are not in our purpose. We will not have a season. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of people say, man, I want a season. Man, I want to be powerful. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, some people say, man, I want to get in that ring and box. Well, you have to get there with that trainer for a while. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yes, I told my story about the boxing in the YMCA last week. But, uh, you know, you know, oh, I, I, I want to be a heart surgeon. Just give me give me the scrubs and the, the, the all the tools. Tell me what to use. I'm going to be a heart surgeon. Not on my heart. You better go do some training. <laughs> better do some training. Amen. You better go do some training first. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Not, not on my watch. Yeah, I've been there and done that. I had four blockages and I only could fix three. That's why my heart it sounded like my Harley. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, they fixed three of them. That was good. And it, it took veins out of my leg. I mean, from close to my knee all the way up near to my groin. And, and I tell my wife sometimes, I, I get in the Charlie horse in my chest, you know, like you get in your leg, a cramp, I get a cramp. And Joey said, you know, you're not. <laughs> I have too much fun. <laughs> my leg pulled up. <clears throat> Amen. I seen a guy up in the West Haven, Connecticut, VA, where I had my surgery. I went for a checkup. And he has some shorts on. He, I mean, his legs were cut all up. Trying to try to find a vein, but he was a smoker, and he couldn't find a decent vein. They finally found enough to patch together. I mean, he looked like he went through a shredder. Poor guy. Okay, if you're not sure, you listen to this. We're nearly closing. <clears throat> you know what that means, right? If you're not sure your specific purpose, just continue to serve God's great general purpose. Mm -hmm. Everybody say general purpose. General purpose. General purpose. Until your specific comes. Assemble together, attend church, tithe, give, fast, serve. I appreciate so many of the people in here, y'all are always serving. You know, some of y'all going to work at Sunday school right after this. I, I appreciate y'all go hand out food and stuff after. Y'all have a servant's heart, and that's what God looks for. Now someone said, well, that, that's all, you know, I punch in, punch out, that's it. Rest of the day mine. Now, what can I do? Amen. Amen. And so I, I appreciate so many of you do that on a regular basis. One more, very important, say not one more, come on. It is illegal. Everybody say illegal. illegal. It is illegal for God to give you a season if you're not in your purpose. When you waste time, you waste your season. 
what are you developing for? When you align to your purpose, he will give you a season. Any season without purpose will be aborted. You qualify for your season and your purpose. Remember, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all of these things, I put another word in, all these other things that he added to it. Some people are seeking only things. That's it. I work three, three jobs to take care of all the bills I made. I mean, I just got a new vehicle, first one I ever had in my life, but I'm not going to run around and say, God bless me with a note. <laughs> I mean, seriously. But some people, you know, God just blessed me with a house note. He just blessed me with a car note. I walked through the Holy shop the other day. You know. mm. <laughs> I really don't have that much of a desire for a brand new one because I don't go that far. If I did, I would, you know. My son, my son yesterday, he sent me a thing. Him and his wife decided there's a restaurant in Florida Keys. They like to live in Fort Lauderdale. So the, the, the guy on the hoarding went 250 miles of the restaurant and ate and come home. He sent me on the same show you everywhere they go, you know, it had music playing. Everyone stopped, there's a picture. And, and I said, I guess you're hungry when you got home. He said, yep, lots of laughs, but yep, I was hungry. <laughs> I've been having to eat all the way home. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> now listen here, we're closing now, really. God changes a person's heart before he changes seasons. You'll be conditioned for your season how to handle promotion. Some people cannot handle promotion. <clears throat> you know, anyone in here that was in military, you know what I mean? Sometimes that nice guy that was a PFC or spec four, then, then a sergeant, when he became a sergeant, he became a bully. He couldn't handle authority. <laughs> so he's shaking your head back to me. The same way on your jobs too. You know, here's the one that was low on the dock and now he's boss. Man, man, his head's so big, can't get through the door. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and God's going to make sure you get handling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was messing with someone in my home just the other day, uh, a few days ago. And when they were walking out, they asked me a question. <laughs> and I really, it took me by surprise. They said, how do you remain humble? Because I don't even really feel that kind of stuff. Hey, you may hum humble, I said, like that. But I got the thing later. I, the real answer is this. If Jesus Christ, the virgin born son of God, could say I could do nothing except the Father show me, how much more than I, born in sin and shape and iniquity, bought by his blood, should be able to say I could do nothing except the Lord show me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not me, it's we. Yes. In, in my own self, it's no good thing in the flesh, but it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. So <clears throat> let's stand <clears throat> and pray a moment here. Amen. Don't worry, they, they won't finish the service without us. Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, and worship you. God, let the word that is spoken today go deep into our spirit. God, there is none like it to my God. Lord, as we stand here right now, we, 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 we're waiting on your presence. God, some men seek your hands, always looking for your presence. But we're looking at your face. We're seeking your presence. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you put us in time. I don't know how much time I have, Lord, but I'm in my purpose. I have no doubt. I'm in my purpose. I'm in my season. And I will continue my season till you call me home. And Lord, that's all that matters. Fulfilling your will. That's all that matters. Everything else is side stuff. Uh, the, the, the cycle, the toys, the, the flowers, the whatever else. Uh, it's all side stuff. Nothing wrong with it, I know. But Lord, that's not my main focus. Yes. I'm not going to say, well, I can't go to church Sunday because I'm going to have to work in my garden. You don't know how many times I hear stuff like that. From Christians. <laughs> really. <laughs> Amen. God, 
I want to do your will. I want to do your will. Baptize us in your presence. Lord, I speak peace on them right now. God, I feel that peace coming in. I speak peace on them right now. Let them relax. If they have not found their purpose, let them recognize it and begin to develop and train because there is a great season ahead that once they break in that season, the stuff they struggle with in purpose, so some of the giants they, they had to fight, it'd be different then. Suddenly, they're going to have power and authority. Suddenly, they're going to see the spirit clearly. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Praise yeah, I feel like a spiritual tranquilizer is hitting me. Oh, thanks.